Good evening. It is Wednesday. We are live at five. Um, we had 20 people sign up for tonight's training. I asked, um, I asked you all last week if you wanted a training the night before Thanksgiving. I know sometimes, you know, a lot of people will go out, their family's over, um, and everyone said they wanted the training. So we'll see who actually shows up live. Um, if you're if you're tuning in for the first time or if you're you know are on here every Wednesday say hi let me know who's on I always like to see who's on so I can say hi I see two viewers right now popping in so just pop in on the chat and say hi um, like always gonna wait a couple minutes hey Candace Candace I was so thrilled to see um, what you sent me your service agreement and everything I thought it was fantastic um, Candace is in one of the accelerator programs and she's doing so fantastic um, hi Cherise how are you um, and I'm going to show everyone so next so she's in the Thursday accelerator obviously tomorrow is Thanksgiving I will be sending out a reminder we're not having class tomorrow um, but next week Candace if you I would love for you to show everyone because it was just so it was pretty her colors her branding was all done correctly she had all the right things in her service agreement in her cleaning checklist she set up for success and she rolled out um, one of my routines that I do in my my cleaning business my existing cleaning business now and cut off like a half an hour on each house and that was the first time she did it so it saves money I teach you guys how to profit um, I'm just so proud, super proud of you I'm super proud of you so let me see what do we got we're a couple minutes and we'll wait like another minute um, for those of you that don't know me my name is Cheryl I know Candace you know me <laughs> my name is Cheryl Hazer I'm a cleaning business coach I'm also an active maid service owner um, my company is called made bright I'm out of Boston Mass I'm about 30 minutes north of Boston um, and I have cleaning business owners scale their businesses drop ugly habits they, they may have picked up along the way um, and get people off their butts and actually get them moving into the world of result producing activities which are things that make you money there's a lot of things in the cleaning business that don't make you money like laundry like buying supplies like accounting that stuff doesn't technically make make you money although it's necessary to run the business those are some of the operational things but they don't make you money so I teach owners how to focus on result producing activities which make you money that actually make your business grow um, I took my own cleaning business from zero I am the founder I was a solo cleaner I was a single parent when I started this business nobody was more down and out than me um, <laughs> and it took it to over 700,000 and growing to date um, in less than well in about four years time so I teach my clients to do the same and they're having amazing results I have clients all over the country I have a few in Canada which is just super excited um, but you can search through the sisters who scale community check out the testimonials video testimonials see the results they're having um, I can guarantee you this if you put in the work you'll see the results it's the people that in life when you don't put in the work you don't see the results right so that's just basically how it is so I'm just gonna get started let's talk about the one burning question how do you get out of the field how do you stop cleaning so you can grow your million dollar cleaning company because you're not going to grow a million dollar cleaning company and you're not going to grow a half a million dollar cleaning company if you're still cleaning okay everyone wants that time freedom it can be done that's what I teach I hope you get there so some people figure out how to do it and some people don't and that's just the reality of it all some people will take calculated risks some won't some are wrapped up in fear some are wrapped up in internal stuff in poverty mindsets in things that they can't get past and the, the reality is is they will not be able to grow until they get past some of those habits um, so how do you become the one that learns to take the risks to try new things and to not be afraid because it really comes down to a few principles like have you ever seen someone that owns multiple businesses they just seem to scale different businesses over and over again well that's not by accident they know and they understand the exact principles and the steps to take how to make those hard decisions and not drag their feet right 
when it comes to doing the things that it takes to grow their businesses. And so tonight's training is all about that. Um, what did I do? What I, you know, how do I say this? What did I do and what do I still do? Okay. Um, like I said, I started as a solo cleaner. I had one mop, one vacuum, one caddy, right? Um, and then I've moved to an account, you know, at a place, I'm, I'm tongue twisted tonight. I moved to a place, I have a full staff, there's three divisions, we do power washing, commercial, and residential. Um, I haven't picked up a mop for one of my clients' houses in a long time, um, about, it's gotta be two and a, about three years now, okay? Um, I'm not burned out physically anymore, I don't feel wiped out every day like I used to. Um, I was very, very like, if, if any of you know my story, like I said, I was a single parent at the time taking care of my son Dylan. That's exactly how I started this business. I started this business out of a necessity because I needed the money, um, like all of you. So I needed the money to put food on the table, okay? We all have similar stories where a lot of us are very much the same. And cleaning houses can be lucrative if it's done correctly. And I emphasize done correctly. So you have to know your profit margins, know your labor rates, track this stuff like an absolute ninja, right? All the time. Because if you don't know your numbers, you're just winging it, right? And you can't wing your business. This is your business. This is your livelihood, right? So you don't, you don't want to wing that. So that's what I help my clients with. I help my clients to stop winging it, right? Plain English. So I help cleaning business owners to stop winging it and run their businesses correctly and implement the right systems to have everything flow, make it easier, okay? So let's get into tonight's training. I'm just gonna check to see who's on here. Hi, Katrina. That's okay, girl, you go do an estimate. Katrina's one of my private clients in Canada. Go do an estimate, go make money. You know you can always catch the replay. So that's what it's all about. All right, <clears throat> so how are we all gonna stop cleaning our cleaning businesses? The big question. So there's a few things that are preventing you from putting the mop down. Let's talk about those. If you wanna write it down, please feel free. Um, you can always watch this again on replay. I am a write down person. I like to write stuff down in notebooks. Number one, you must Get rid of your poverty mindset if you have one. Not everyone has one. You have to get rid of this, okay? Have any of you heard of that before, okay? So poverty mindset refers to a set of beliefs or attitudes that hinder an individual's ability to escape poverty or achieve financial stability. It's a scarcity mentality. So people with a poverty mindset tend to believe that resources are limited opportunities are scarce this perspective often leads to a fear of taking risks or pursuing ambitious goals due to a belief that success is unattainable they say oh why me oh that would be good for you know some other person but not me like almost like I'm not good enough to have those things or if you grew up poor okay I was like this in the beginning I was like this in the beginning I was an extreme couponer, <laughs> and I don't think any of you know this story. I was an extreme couponer. I watched this lady that's from my area, and she made $60,000 a year extreme couponing, but did she really make $60,000 a year? Did she really, right? So I adopted the principles. I'd be that person in line with a stack of coupons. I would buy coupons from websites. I would cut all the flyers out. I would get all the newspapers. I would get double, triple, whatever it took. Yeah, I would save. I would save a little bit of money. I'd drill down that grocery bill. And then you get addicted to drilling down that grocery bill. But when you have to drive to 17 stores to redeem all the coupons and half the time you get to the store, the product is out because you have all these other extreme couponers doing the same thing. It's very stressful. And when you look at it long term, I was actually preventing myself from making money. I had that poverty mindset. I got to drill down the bill, drill down the bill. Okay. So if I was drilling down my grocery bill by $100 a week, I mean, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. But that's only $400 a month. If I had taken that, I must have spent at least 10, 15 hours a week trying to figure that out. Maybe more. If I had taken that time and applied it to making money, I could have made way more money than $400 a week. 
right? Four hundred dollars a month, right? So I was that person. I was that poverty mindset person because I was a single parent and I was scared, right? I needed to put money on the table, food on the table. I needed to have money to pay the rent. So I came from that. So a lot of times that has to do with having lack of financial literacy, right? Poverty mindset is also, you know, sometimes associated with a limited understanding of financial concepts such as budgeting, such as saving, opening up lines of credit, investing in themselves. These are all things, you know, that you may lack or may you may not lack too. Um, it's the knowledge you lack, right? And it, that can make it super difficult for you to make informed financial decisions and break free from the cycle of poverty or the thought of scarcity of not having enough, okay? Sometimes you see a negative self-image as a result from this. Those with a poverty mindset struggle with low self-esteem. They believe they are unworthy or incapable of achieving success. This is all mindset stuff. This is all stuff that's going on in your brain. These are the reasons why you're not moving forward. These are the reasons, right? You think, you know, like you, if you have this mindset, it can lead to limited opportunities and then lack of motivation, and then you can get depressed, stuff like that. A person that has a poverty mindset also has short-term thinking. So they focus on the immediate needs, right? The instant gratification rather than looking six months out, okay, where do I want to be? That long-term planning. So that can result in impulsive spending, accumulating debt, and, and basically like lack of seeing the financial future, you know, of what exactly is going on. So these things are all associated with the poverty mindset. You can see how these things can prevent you from achieving what you want. So that's number one. Try and get rid of the poverty mindset. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not gonna happen overnight. Number two, cleaning business owners struggle with is they struggle with learning how to delegate. They just say, fine, when it doesn't go my way, fine, I'll just do it myself, fine, I'll just do it myself. Entrepreneurs are super famous for fine, I'll just do it myself. And what happens is you have 20,000 things of fine, I'll just do it myself that are on your list and you get burnt out. Get burnt out. So you have to learn how to delegate things, to give other things to people, to free up your time. How many people here feel that they do a better job cleaning the houses rather than their staff? Show of hands. I want to know. Because I used to think that. Now my, now my girls, I think my girls are better than me now. But that's because I taught them to be better than me so I didn't have to do it. Okay? <clears throat> do you ever say to yourself, oh, I'm just going to do it, I'll just do it myself. Then your to-do list becomes 10 things to 50 things, right, a day. So you don't want to do that, right? You don't want to do that. Who has said that before? I know, Katrina, I knew you were going to say yes. <laughs> I had a feeling. <clears throat> Candace, I was a couponer buying coupons. Isn't it crazy? There was, there was a, a couple of sites and stuff, and, like, I got into it. Hi, Sarah. Everyone say hi to Sarah. Sarah, a.k.a. Pia. Sarah is the community manager and helps me tremendously on organizing, getting videos to people, because my goal is to make sure I get all the information out to people, and sometimes, <clears throat> you know, I get bogged down, and I want to make sure. So Sarah has been with me um, a little bit about a month, so say hello. And the reason, if nobody knows, why her screen name is Pia is because her daughter could not say her name. So she would say, she wouldn't say Sophia, her daughter's name was Sophia. She would call herself Pia. So that's why the name came from that. So, but she is Sarah <laughs> and she is awesome. Um, okay, so here's the question. How are you gonna clean 250 houses yourself? Because this is around the number that you would be at to reach a million dollars, okay? Give or take, depending on your price point. Um, how are you gonna do that yourself? Guess what? You're not. You're not going to do that, right? How do you do that? How do you do the payroll, the scheduling, the marketing, the buying supplies, your billing, your selling, like all your estimates? How are you going to do all that unless you're Superwoman or Iron Man or Wonder Woman or whatever? You're not going to do it. You can't. You can't do everything. I can't do everything. So you need to decide. There's two ways to go. Do you want to be capped at about seven to nine thousand a month? 
as a solo cleaner because that's that is the cap right I call it the 10k tap out you can't get past that as a solo cleaner okay or do you really want to learn how to scale and learn how to grow because those are business skills that are totally trainable totally teachable that's what I teach okay so do you guys see where I'm going with this you can't do everything so if you want to grow you need to learn how to delegate very well. You need to learn how to be a good teacher. And with being a teacher comes patience. And that's what not a lot of us have because we're an entrepreneur and we're a doer, right? We do things and you'll just say, never mind, I'll just do it myself. You have to be patient. People aren't gonna learn as fast as you because it's your baby, it's your business, they're your employee. They wanna come in, punch a clock, punch out, get a paycheck and go home. They don't have the same passion as you. So it's going to require that you have a little bit of patience with these people, right? Because you need to teach your staff to clean like you do. That's the biggest issue, okay? So that also means that you need to create a killer training program within your company. And this is one of the things that's also in the Accelerator program. I help members do that. So. And which is what I'm talking about. Candace just created and rolled it out this week in her business, and it's shaved off. It shaved off time, which means more money in Candace's pocket, which is what we want, right? What's the second thing? Okay, like I said, it's not to be a good teacher. Um, so it's creating a, um, it creating a plan to teach them how to clean. Okay, so it has to be systematic right they have to be doing this task while the other one's doing this task you can't let them bounce all around the house because then they'll be like did you do the bathroom upstairs did you do the baseboards yep yep things get missed and guess what you get the phone call from the client you get the phone call and they're like um i don't think they cleaned the toilets you know what i mean when you know they clean the toilets they may have just like skipped a little bit of it right so when they're bouncing all over the house like that things get missed okay um so if you want to grow to over to even 250k you need to have some systems okay and it takes work I'm not gonna to lie to you and I shoot straight from the hip it takes work but it can be done right I just want to ask you did you all think it's gonna be easy I never said it was gonna be easy it can be done nothing good is ever easy right but if you can master these skills of training and of teaching that is when you'll get the freedom I've done it myself I've taught a lot of people how to do it the freedom is great once you get there but picture like you're on an airplane and you're going to a new altitude right you're gonna go through some clouds you're gonna have some turbulence but it's okay you have to stay the course you can't quit because if you quit what's gonna happen to the to the plane the plane's gonna go down plane crash right you're gonna quit you have to keep going no matter how hard it gets and everyone has a different version of hard okay it's how you react to the stressor and what I help you know my clients do is learn how to not react crazy to the stressors because every time you react crazy to the stressor your body feels that right and I believe in energies I believe that if you can just maintain an even keel and not go up the entrepreneurial roller coaster the hills like I say just made an even keel it's a lot easier for you to problem solve you're problem solving every day as the owner of a company as a CEO so it, instead of going like this all the time you want to go like this maybe an occasional bump right come back and go like that it feels much better to your body and it's going to allow you to adapt and be the true leader that you really want to be you don't want to fly at the handle you don't want to swear at people you don't want you know when the, an employee does something dumb you have to maintain your calmness cool collective problem solver because it's much better to do that it's not good to get all fired up it's not good for for you as a person your body it's not good for your employees to see you blow up and react in such a crazy way because people can quit you don't want to do that okay so um, it's a labor of love this business is a labor of love and being a cleaning business owner for sure but you need to fall in love with delegating and teaching skills to people and that's when the freedom comes okay is this making sense is this making sense the next thing you need to learn how to do 
is to not be a control freak. Anyone a control freak here? If you're a control freak, if you're a self-proclaimed control freak, raise your hand and say control freak. I'm a little bit of a control freak. I'm a little bit of a, I'm a control freak in my house, right? With my husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> so are you a control freak, right? So I always kind of say a control freak is used to describe someone who has a strong desire to be in control of situations, control of people or events around them. They often exhibit excessive need for control. They may go to great lengths to maintain it, right? Control freaks tend to micromanage. You don't want to micromanage your employees long term. There's a difference between teaching and micromanaging. Teaching is teaching them the skills and then you have to hand it off to them. Because if you might, no one likes to be micromanaged, right? They want they want you to believe that they can do everything yourself, that they can be out in the field, that they can lead a team, that they don't need you hovering over them like a mother, right? You don't want to do that, okay? So control freaks tend to micromanage. They have difficulty delegating or trusting others to handle things. This is something else you have to work on. This is an internal thing. This isn't anything your employees are doing or not doing. This is all you, okay? I struggled with it too. When I first started stepping out of the field, I was like in a panic situation. You'll do the same thing, right? It's normal. It's totally normal. Do you think any one of you here is a control freak? I'm gonna check in. Did anyone write anything? Candace control freak. I know, I know you are. Bye Katrina, bye Katrina. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the need for control and over, you have an overwhelming desire to control every aspect of their lives, people, or things around them, right? And they feel anxious or uneasy when things are in control. I know you feel like that, Candace. We've been working together a while. Um, and so this will tend to lead to micromanaging. Control freaks often micromanage tasks, situations. They feel the need to oversee every detail, right? And our business is super detailed. They find it difficult to delegate responsibilities, to trust others to perform tasks without their direct involvement. And nobody wants to be micromanaged, okay? Nobody does. So learning how to empower your staff is one of the best skills that you can acquire as an entrepreneur. And it's one of the hardest ones to give up. You're giving up control. Your, your business is your baby, right? You, you know, you're afraid of the uncertainty. Control freaks have a hard time dealing with the uncertainty or the ambiguity of things. They try and control everything around them um, because they want to minimize unexpected outcomes and avoid risks, okay? That's why you guys might be doing that. Control freaks are also inflexible sometimes. They want it their way of the highway. They have a rigid mindset, right? They find it super challenging to adapt to change. Sound familiar, right? And they may, may resist, you know, you may be resisting ideas or like different approaches that challenge the sense of control. So being a control freak doesn't necessarily mean someone is a bad person, like not at all. There's a million of us out there. Um, but some people genuinely believe that their need for control is in everyone's best interest, probably more so than not. But this excessive control can be super detrimental to your growth, super detrimental, okay? And very detrimental to your staff. If you're trying to train new staff, this could hurt you because you're having a hard time giving it up and going out there, right? It's hard, right? And if you don't have a really great training system that you've rolled out, that your staff has rolled out, that all of you have done together that makes sense, you're gonna have a problem. You can't have everyone cleaning their own way. They're ha like McDonald's makes their french fries a certain way, their hamburgers a certain way, their McFlurries a certain way, whatever. Their shamrocks a certain way. They do this systematically all the time. This is the same thing. You have to have a systematic way that two people or one people enter a house. You wanna have a system that's the most profitable way to clean a house, the most profitable and the fastest and most efficient way to clean a house so you make the most amount of money without skipping things, obviously, right? So that is that one. Take a look inward, I know it's hard. Take a look inward and say, am I a control freak? What 
things do I obsess over? Can I not get over? Okay? And see what those things are. And if you want to message me what they are, I'd be happy to listen. <laughs> so you can do that. So another one that will potentially inhibit you from growing, you know, to over 500,000 and beyond is lack of belief. Lack of belief in yourself, right? It's a common challenge. It's scary being an entrepreneur because you're the only one, okay? Many people face it though. You are not alone, right? This happens in all of our lives and it can come out in very different ways. So it can come out as like low self-esteem, self-doubt, oh, I can't do that. Oh, you know, lack of confidence, right? It's important to remember that self-belief is not a fixed trait. It can be developed, it can be strengthened, it can be changed over time. So don't give up on yourself, <clears throat> okay? The people that end up not doing well in this business are the people that quit. That's it. If you have a burning desire to succeed and you don't quit and you stop at nothing and you get mad when forces, like I can remember early on when forces would come into play, come into the business that would make me want to quit. It would piss me off so bad that I would get up and I'd be like, I don't want to swear. I don't swear that bad. I would get up and I would be like, you're not going to, you're not going to break me. That's it. I'd work 10 times harder. That's how I mentally got myself around those really crappy days because we all have crappy days in this business, in any business. It's just, you know, it's not all, you know, sunshine and roses, right? It's not. It's not. I would get furious and I'd be like, you're, you're not going to break me. I don't know who I was talking to. The forces, the universe, but I'd be like, you're not going to break me. I'm going to continue and I'm going to do this. Nothing's going to stop me. COVID. When COVID happened, I was like, you're not going to break me. I'm still going to run my company. I kept my company open. I went out, we went out like ninjas and cleaned. I was still cleaning at that point. We went out and cleaned. There was no one on the roads. We found people to clean. We went out and cleaned. We were like, and I said to the one girl that was working with me, I said, the only way I'm going to stop cleaning is if the militia comes to my door and says, I can't clean anymore. You have to have that attitude. And if you do, you will win. So it's the lack of belief in yourself. This is all tied in, right? I was so mad because I was like, my business was going so good and it was growing and everything. And a COVID came in. I'm like, you're not going to wreck my business. I, w I would get like furious. I'd get mad and I would just keep going. And that's, that's how you do it, right? So why don't we do a little exercise? Take some time to write on a piece of paper your strengths. What are your strengths? And if any of you want to share, I'd love to hear them. All right. Are you good at sales? Are you good at customer service? Are you good with people, your clients? Um, are you a good marketer? Are you a good, are you good at accounting, right? I'm not the best at accounting. I can do it, but I'm not the best at it. Um, so recognizing your strengths is really, really important to figure out what you excel at, right? Your skills, your qualities, your achievements, make a list of what you're good at make a list of your accomplishments and remind yourself of them regularly tell yourself you got this tell yourself you're good at this part at this part at that part and instead of beating yourself up when you're not so good at something else just look at your pot look at what you're good at all right and you'll be fine you can always outsource things you're not good at you don't really want to be doing your own accounting. You want to outsource that. You want to outsource that. The bookkeeping, all that stuff should go somewhere else, all right? Um, but because everyone has strengths. So instead of focusing on the negative, take some time to focus on the positive because the more you focus on the positive, I can guarantee you the more positivities that's going to come in, right? This can help you so, so much. Like I know what I'm good at, right? I'm good at sales. I'm good at marketing. I'm good with my clients. I'm good with making them feel comfortable and trusting us to hire us. That's that's what I'm good at. I'm also good at being consistent. I'm good at things that have to do, when I have to do stuff I don't want to do, like discipline, or get up, whatever, go to the gym, you name it. In the business, things I have to do, I just get up and I bang these things out, right? I'm very good at that, right? Because I know that those are the activities that are going to progress me and propel me further. So I focus on that stuff and I excel at those types of things so I know what I'm good at okay hi Heather 
that's okay don't worry you can watch the replay tonight's a tough night right so I just I wanted to just I wanted to I wanted to do it so you guys could at least watch the replay so that's important to me if you can't catch it live you can catch it on the replay so the next one is don't believe what everyone else tells you do your own research right believing the hype is very it can cause you a lot of problems right so here's why so hype often generates excitement and anticipation it also can distort your reality and lead to unrealistic expectations so don't believe everything you hear the cleaning business forms some of them are good some of them are really good they're great with connecting people some of them have a lot of misinformation some of them have negative nellies some of them have positive people so it's a mix of everything so just take those with a grain of salt some people like to vent whatever right it's not anyone's intention to, to bring in negativity, but sometimes it just happens. So I always say, seek out your own information. If you have a question, it's absolutely fine to ask a question on there, but seek out your own information and get it from, you know, industry experts, people that have done what you want to do, okay? Rather than depending on info when you don't know anyone from Apple, right? So, um, with regards to hiring ads, right, and interviewing correctly, not scaring the crap out of your own clients, right? You should be able to hire people. There's a ton of applicants applying for jobs, right? So people say the thing, no one wants to work. Don't believe the hype because the unemployment rate in America is 3.5%. That's a hypey thing. People say no one wants to work because they haven't figured out how to retain people. And that's the bottom line. I have people that have been with me four years, five years, three years, okay? That is knowing how to build a company culture, knowing how to hire people that are gonna gel with personalities. This is another one of the big things I teach, knowing how to hire the, write the right ads. I go over people's ads and I say, hey, this ad's a little harsh, right? Right, you hear it all the time. And if, if you're working with me and I've said it to you, you know who you are, there's been more than one because you're so frustrated that people aren't doing what you want them to do. You try and scare them and say, this is a really physical job, don't apply if you're not physical or whatever. You scare the crap out of them. You don't wanna do that. You, know, you want it to be nice and happy, joy, joy. You wanna only talk to people that have cleaning experience or at least have some type of physical job, like a CNA or something like that. You don't wanna, you know, people that are in retail have no idea. They can't do this job. Very difficult. Unless they have kids, maybe they're cleaning up after their kids all the time. But it, it's a difficult job. So knowing that, right, <laughs> knowing how to write those ads is so crucial. And that's one of the reasons why my clients are doing so well. It's because I don't sugarcoat anything. I don't believe in sugarcoating anything. I'm not mean, but I believe in getting to the root of the problem right away so we can focus on solutions and get to work. There's no time to beat around the bush, right? I don't like beating around the bush. I like to focus I like to find solutions and keep going because you're gonna, as a CEO, you're you're fixing problems all day long. You're putting out fires all day long, okay? So you need to find where ground zero is. You need a starting point. You need a diving board to jump off of to start working, to start fixing everything. So that's what we start with. My clients and I start with the ground, the ground zero document, right? We have a ground zero document where there are, we do a goal projection, we see where they wanna be in a certain time frame, and then we outline exactly what we're gonna do in that time frame to get to work, okay? So do you all know where you're at? Do you all know, do you know your numbers? Do you know where you're at financially? Do you know how many clients you need um, to hit you know, an, another $100,000 in the next six months. Do you know all your numbers, right? So in your hiring, your sales systems, your use of technology, where are you all at? Because if you know where you're at, you can focus on what you want to do, all right? Is this making sense? I'm getting thirsty. So next one, how you wanna get to half a million dollars. What you don't want to, what you, the reason why you're not at a half a million dollars right now is you are not consistent with the right result producing activities to get you out of the field. Bottom line, like I said, I'm going to bottom line you, right? But you can fix it. 
okay? Learning how to be a great trainer, number one. You learn how to be a great trainer, then you can train people to train, and then you've developed a tier of management, and then you're out of the field. Yeah, easier said than done. There's hiccups with it, there's turbulence, but eventually you can do it. Learn how to raise your prices to get premium dollar for the services you offer. We're servant hearts, we're cleaners, we're servant hearts, and most of us are women, so we want to help people. Um, you know, people ask us for discounts all the time. I got asked for a discount yesterday. She's like, if, will you give me a discount if I refer my neighbors? And I looked at her and I said, if you refer your neighbors and they stick with us for a certain amount of time, I'll flat fee you a discount. I'm not just going to give you a discount because you're going to give me two names. What are you crazy? I'm not doing that. And you shouldn't do it either. So um, things like that, you, you have to know your value of what your company brings to the table and your confidence will soar when you're in front of people. I was at an estimate today. She talked to me last year. She hired her neighbor's cleaner because everyone in the neighborhood was using this one cleaner. She said the cleaning was horrible. She called me back. I went in there and I said, here's the difference. Here's the line. I said, I know you're not paying what my price is. I go, but here's why. And I said, state of Massachusetts, if you have employees, you have to carry workers comp. You have to pay W-2 employees. I said, your people that are coming now, chances are they're probably not doing that. I go, so they're operating illegal. So God forbid anything happens in your house, you're held liable and there's no insurance. And I said, that's the difference. We're a few more dollars because of that reason. If you know that cold, you go in and you sit in front of everyone, you're the boss. You're the master of that conversation. Even if they can't afford it, that's okay. You leave the table feeling confident that you know your stuff. And when you feel confident when you're in front of an estimate, that's when the game changes. That's when it all changes because if you walk away with someone that isn't willing to pay your prices, you don't want them anyways because you need to, you know, you need to have a certain price level to make sure the bills are paid, to make sure you are paid. There's no sense in running a business and not running a profit. That's silly, right? Okay. I think I've had a lot of coffee today. <laughs> you need to learn how to be a great boss that everyone wants to work for. You need to know your numbers, like I said that. You need to know your profits, your labor rates, okay? And you need to develop your consistency and your discipline to get into a routine to do all these things you need to do and your profits will grow and you can get to it but all these systems have to be in place some of you may only want to make eight or nine thousand a month and be a solo cleaner maybe have a helper here and there that's fine I have other people that want to go to a million dollars so it all depends where you're at it's completely up to you because it's your business so these are just a few of the things the result producing activities you need to get good at to scale your business where you don't have to clean anymore and you can just manage the business the goal is to stop working in your business and start working on your business okay these are all the things I help my clients with all the ladies that are in the accelerator program are getting great results because they're learning what to do okay so if you can start to work on these things I've talked about above um, I a I hundred percent I a hundred percent guarantee you you will see growth I guarantee it because anyone that applies these principles sees growth if you don't see growth you're not applying the principles it's just basic right it's just it I didn't start out with a silver spoon in my mouth I was a single parent trying to put food on the table I wasn't rich right Someone didn't give me hundreds of thousands of dollars to start this business, right? As a matter of fact, like I said, I was like trying to make the rent, trying to put food on the table, extreme couponing at the time, which I learned that that wasn't the way to do it, right? Um, I was taking a bunch of bull from a bunch of clients until I started having control, valuing myself, okay? I took control of my business, my businesses, I created policies, procedures I started having respect for myself because sometimes in the cleaning business people think they can push you around I know because I've been there right they think that they can make the rules because it's their house but it's actually your business so you decide who is gonna treat you poorly I don't let anyone treat me poorly anymore I did when I was starting out of course I did 
I needed to put food on the table. I needed to make money. I got stiff from cleaning apartment complexes. I had these men that were like, you know, would just stiff me and be like, oh, she doesn't need to get paid, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I've been through all that stuff. I didn't have any contracts in place, so I was out of the money. I didn't know how to, I wasn't taking credit cards. I was taking cash, Venmo, check. I was out the money. I got pissed off and I said no more. I started having respect for myself. I stopped taking crap, right? And this is where you need to get so you attract the good people because there's a lot of good people out there with good intentions, right? At this point, I rolled up my sleeves. I was willing to work for it. I was willing to work on myself, okay? I was willing to work on the lack of skills that I didn't have in the beginning because I knew I lacked some major skills and I figured stuff out. I took calculated risks, right? Some things worked, some things didn't. I didn't die, everything was all right. That's what it's all about. Being afraid of something, right? And the unknown and doing it anyways, right? Feel the fear and do it anyways, that's what they say, right? There's no other way around this. So if any of you are ready, are you ready to build? Are you ready to build in 2024? It's right around the corner, it's five weeks away. Do you all have your 2024 goals, right? If you're ready to build, we should have a chat type the word chat, reach out by DM, right? I'll reach out. Let's have a conversation about what you're struggling with right now and see if what I do is a fit for you. You can ask any of my clients what it's like to work with me. I'm an open book. I just want results for all of you because I know it can be done because I did it. That is my mission, right? Is for you guys to have the cleaning business of your dreams. You can have some freedom and be a boss and you know break out in the middle of the day and go have a massage or break out in the middle of the day and go get your head on or whatever you let me your life on your terms is what i want for you so working with me is no hype it's all results right it's all experience it's work right there's homework in the accelerator program there's homework there's weekly zoom calls right but it works okay i help you get the massive changes you want if you're willing to work um, remember this, right? Massive changes equals massive results. It doesn't happen any other way, okay? That's how you do it. So hit me up. If you think you're ready to grow in 2024, DM me. Let me know you're ready. I don't work with any everyone. I only work with the people that I feel are motivated, all right? That I feel that are truly ready to go to the next level, to commit to themselves, and their businesses, those are the people that get the best results, okay? The people that work get the best results. April, no. Hi, April. April's brand new in the accelerator. Um, no, I'm not sure what no is. Maybe you're not a control freak. That's good. Maybe that's what we were talking about. Um, let me know. So I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Great Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for all of you um, in this group. I think this group is amazing and it's super cool. Um, so have a lovely day tomorrow. Don't eat too much. I'm going to try not to eat too much. Um, and we will see you next week. All right. Have a great night. Bye.